Listen while the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Good evening, this is Bill Foreman speaking to you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of their own store name. They've done that because they recommend and sell the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. The new Andela Field Reducing Plan is a good example. This plan is one of our druggists' most popular sales items. It helps you lose quickly, easily, up to five pounds a week and where it shows. No wonder our customers like it. It's the work of famous health and beauty expert, Anne Delafield, who has successfully reduced more overweight people than any other expert alive. That's why you can be sure of a safe, sound, scientific plan with no drugs, no calorie counting. You get vitamins, special appetite-reducing wafers, and a big beauty book to guide you. See how easy it is to be slim. Ask about the Anne Delafield Reducing Plan at Rexall Drugstores Everywhere. Good health to all from Rexall. Now your Rexall family druggist brings you a transcribed half hour with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. Richard Diamond, the smiling gumshoe. Well, if it ain't Sergeant Otis, the laughing hyena. The lieutenant in? Yeah, go on in and spoil his afternoon. You know, Otis, I think you've got the kindest, most wonderful face in the whole wide world. You do? Absolutely. But I do wish you'd do me a favor. Well, sure, anything. Stop wearing it upside down. Hello, Walt. Hello, Rick. Sit down. Oh, thanks, thanks. Uh, what's doing? Want a sandwich? Mm, I'll take some of that coffee. Sure. Something on your mind, Rick? No, just got tired of sitting around the office. No business? Not in a week. Hmm. <laughs> got any sugar? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Here. Yeah, Otis? Uh, Lieutenant, I got some guy on the phone who won't give me his name. Says he wants to talk to you. Matter of life and death. Okay, put him on. Right. Homicide, Lieutenant Levinson. I'm going to say this once, so listen carefully. Tonight, somewhere in New York City, I'm going to kill a man, and there's nothing you can do about it. What? Promptly at 8 o'clock, somewhere in this city, I'm going to kill a man. Hello? Hello? Something wrong? Some guy says he's going to kill somebody at 8 o'clock tonight. Oh, dandy. Crank. Did he say who his victim was going to be? No, just a crank. I should have humored him. Made suggestions. My landlord, for instance. Be a little gruesome if he really did it. Yeah. You'd have a hard time protecting eight million people from a killer you don't know anything about. Hope it was just a crank. Otis. Yellow yeah, cut. If that guy calls back, put him through and trace the call. Right. It sure would be miserable if that call was on the level. Oh, relax. I'll have some more coffee. I had some more coffee. Walt worried a little, not a lot, because the big precinct caters to a good number of cranks every day. We talked about old times, and around six, I matched Walt for dinner. He stuffed himself at the automat until I ran out of change and begged for mercy. Then he dropped me off at my flat on 53rd and went back to the precinct. I showered, shaved, slipped into my blue suit, and headed for the door. Yeah. Do me a favor, will you, Rick? You gotta stop stuffing yourself, Walt. You sound like you got indigestion. I'm down at the morgue. Meet me here, please. Oh, now look, I got a date with a live one. I'm in on the start of some trouble. It's liable to grow. That guy who called made good. He stabbed a man to death on Broadway at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Here he is, Lieutenant. 
Hello, Walt. Hi, Rick. Thanks for coming down. Okay, Hal. Who is he? Or, uh, who was he? Brother identified him. Abraham Weiss. Stabbed in the heart from behind with a long, thin instrument. On Broadway at 8 o'clock. That's right. Mm. A dozen people saw him stagger to the curb and fall. Most of them just thought he was drunk. You think your boy on the phone did it? 8 o'clock, right on the nose. Whoever did it must have walked up behind him, jabbed him just below the left shoulder blade, and kept on walking. What do you want me for, Walt? If this guy on the phone did kill Abraham Weiss and we can't find a motive, that's a little more than a simple killing. We may be mixed up with a madman. Oh, so I qualify in that league. You're one of the few guys who really is interested in criminal psychology. Well, I think it's the answer. You can't stop something unless you know the cause. Will you give me a hand, Rick? Sure, sure. I've got Weiss's family at the station. Let's go see them. Why? Why, Lieutenant? Why did this happen to Abe? That's what we're going to try and find out, Mrs. Weiss. We were hoping you might help us. Oh, he, didn't, he didn't have any enemies. He was a good man. We have three children. I left them with Mrs. Bellotti, my neighbor. It, it's going to be hard on them. You're sure your husband didn't know it? No. He didn't have any enemies. He was a good husband and a good father. Everybody liked him. Well, only last week, Mrs. Dowd up the street from us told me. We'd like a list of your brother's friends, Mr. Weiss. Where he worked, people he had business with, anyone you can remember who might give us a lead. Been sitting out there thinking about that. There just isn't anyone that I know would want to kill Abe. He was a good guy, did his job, took care of Louise and the kids. He didn't bother nobody. How long were Louise and Abe married? For, uh, no, six years. Maybe a little more. Nice girl, Louise. Oh, the best. A good wife. What happens to her now? I'll take care of him. You're not married, huh? No. Quite a job taking care of a widow and three kids. I'm doing all right. It's the least I can do. You got a girl? Yeah, why? Maybe going to get married, huh? Well, I'm engaged. I've been thinking about it. It'll have to wait for a while, I guess. Until Louise gets back on her feet. Okay. Tell us about some of your brother's friends. Well, I guess his best friend was Art Brearley. They was awful close for years. He told us about everyone he could think of. He gave us a dozen names and addresses we could check. Like Louise, Martin couldn't figure why anyone would want to kill Abraham Weiss. The next was Mrs. Rebecca Weiss, tired. The hurt in her eyes, enough for all the mothers who had raised a son and lost him. We'll try not to keep you too long, Mrs. Weiss. It's all right, Lieutenant. You want to help. Would you like a glass of water? No, no. When will I be able to see my son? It's right that I should see my son. A few questions first, if you don't mind. I know you're trying to help. Certainly, a few questions. As many as you like, Lieutenant. Not long with Mrs. Rebecca Weiss. Nothing that would help to catch her son's killer. So we checked the people who had known Abraham, and there were plenty. His boss gave us a few more names to add to the long list. All of them friends who couldn't imagine why anyone would want to kill a nice guy like Abe. At 7.30 the next morning, Walt looked at reports and poured more coffee. Here. I'll put sugar in it. Ah, uh, thanks. If that phone call was on the level, why would a guy kill like that? Call us and tell us he was going to do it. What would be his reason? Uh, well, couldn't guess. But if that guy who called did do the killing, you can bet he'll phone again. Why? Well, he bragged he was going to do it. He'll want the credit. Well, I gotta get some rest. A couple of hours, anyway. Let's both get a couple. Mm. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Ah, it doesn't matter. Lousy dream. What time is it? Five o'clock. Oh, I died, didn't I? Our boy called again. Oh? You trace it? Phone booth in Grand Central. What do you have to say? How much. Wanted to know how he liked his handiwork. What's a good answer to that one? 
Well, I said a few things, but I guess he figured we weren't satisfied, so he promised he'd kill somebody else tonight. Hello, Rick. Seen the papers? No. Here. Hmm. Fiend terrorizes city, unknown killer murders at will, police baffled. Everybody's on my back. Exactly. What did he say? You want to hear? I made a recording. Let's hear it. Okay, Otis, put him on. Hello, Lieutenant. Yeah? What do you think now, Lieutenant? I did what I said I was going to do, didn't I? Look, who is this? The man who called yesterday and said he was going to kill someone at 8 o'clock last night. I don't believe it. Well, certainly you do. You'd like to stall so you could have this call traced. Well, you'd better listen. I want everybody to know just how stupid the police force really is. I'm going to kill again tonight, and there's nothing you can do about it. Look, you, whoever you are, if it's the last thing I ever do, I'll... Tonight at 8, another innocent victim will die because the police can do nothing about it. Hello. Hello. Otis. The call came from a phone booth in Grand... He said another innocent victim. Yeah, so he's a nut. For some reason, he hates the police force. There's your motive. Well, I guess it's possible, but something sticks in my craw. Yeah? What? Eight o'clock. Why pick eight o'clock both times? Well, I guess like you said, he wants the credit. We're liable to get a couple of killings in an evening. He wants us to be sure which one he did. Okay, so he makes it eight o'clock the first time. Why the second? Why not six or seven or ten or... Just following a pattern, I guess. Uh, maybe so. Well, what'll we do? I got every man possible on the streets. But, Rick, let's face it, this is a pretty big city. And it's six, two, and even. If he does kill again, it won't be anywhere near the scene of his first stabbing. I guess we just wait. Yeah, a little over an hour to go. So we waited. Walt got the coffee going, and I went through a whole package of cigarettes. Somewhere in the middle of New York, probably on a crowded street, a man was walking, waiting like we were for 8 o'clock, waiting to stab someone through the heart, waiting for 8 o'clock. More coffee? No. Give me a cigarette. You don't smoke. Want a bet? Ah, uh, here. Got a match? Got a lighter. Ah, uh, this is no good. Yeah? Let's go. Where to? Entrance to Madison Square Garden. Man stabbed to death in the crowd going into the fights. Right at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Now you can get five times the established daily requirement of all vitamins with known minimums in one formula. It's Rexall 5X Multivitamin, a marvelous new product direct from the world-famous Rexall Laboratories. In this new carefully balanced formula, Rexall scientists have provided a tablet that is five times stronger than the minimum daily requirement of all vitamins with established minimums, plus red crystalline B12. Rexall family druggists are so anxious for you to reap the benefits of this amazing new vitamin formula that they invite you to try it for 10 days at their cost. They offer you a 10-day trial size, a regular dollar and 79 cent value in itself, free of extra cost with a purchase of the regular bottle of 50, both for only $6.95. If after 10 days you do not notice a marked difference in your general health and well-being, Return the unopened bottle of 50 tablets and your full purchase price will be refunded. Take advantage of this special introductory offer on Rexall 5X Multivitamin. The tablets that give you five times the established daily requirement of all vitamins with known minimum, plus red crystalline B12. Ask for 5X Multivitamin at Rexall drugstores everywhere. And now back to tonight's adventure with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. A 
man murdered going into Madison Square Garden to see the fights. Stabbed through the heart while he stood in the middle of the large crowd. We went through the same routine. Identify the body. Question witnesses who had been close to him. See his friends. Anyone who knew him. Name's Leon Ellis. Small-time fight manager. No family. Handles a young kid named Billy Martin. Wasn't fighting last night. At 10 o'clock the next morning, we found Billy Martin working at the East Side Gym. We talked to him for a while, but he couldn't help much. So we kept going, making our list of names, talking to everyone, all morning and into the afternoon. By 4.30, we were holding each other up. Look, we're working with a madman who kills anybody close to him so he can show how helpless we are to stop him. The whole city's in a panic. The newspapers are blasting everybody in the department, yours truly in particular. Yeah? I got him on the line again. He even bragged to me about this last killing. Trace it as fast as you can. Right. Start that recorder, Rick. It's our boy again. Okay. Go ahead. Fifth Precinct, Lieutenant Levinson. You can skip the formalities, Lieutenant. Your sergeant told you who was on the line. Well, I did it again last night, didn't I, Lieutenant? Okay, so we can't stop you. I admit it. I'll admit it to the papers. That should make you happy. The police department can't do anything about it. That's what you want, isn't it? Again tonight, Lieutenant. One more person will die. Now, wait a minute. At least give me a chance to talk to you. While you trace the call? No. Tonight at 8 o'clock, and you can't stop me. Hello? Yeah? Call came from a phone booth in Rockefeller Center. Fix the right place to call from. We look pretty silly rounding up everybody in Rockefeller Center. Walt looked sick and I felt it. What could we do? We knew nothing about our killer or where he'd strike next. Walt called in the reporters and gave them the story. The papers would blast the department, but it was the best way to warn the public to stay off the streets. The department was alerted. Radio stations were given bulletins to broadcast. And Walt and I climbed into a prowl car and started cruising. At 8.5, it came in. Attention, all units in the vicinity of Zone 12. A 211 in front of 415 West 64th. 415 William 64. Ambulance, dead body. Car 73, come in, please. 73, go ahead. 211 at 415 West 64 is a stabbing, Lieutenant. Roger. That's it, Rick. The victim was an elderly man, dressed expensively and lying face down on the sidewalk. Again, no witnesses to the killing. Most of the people who had seen the man fall realized almost immediately what had happened because of the publicity on the last two killings. But like one man said... Well, how are you going to see who killed him in a crowd like this? Maybe a hundred people on the block when it happens. Boy, you guys better start doing something. Yes, sir. Does Mr. Arthur Reeves live here? Yes, sir, but Mr. Reeves is not in at the moment. I'm from the police. Lieutenant Levinson, homicide. Homicide? I'd like to talk with everybody in the house. Certainly, sir. Has something happened to Mr. Reeves? He's been murdered. Oh, no. No, not Mr. Reeves. How many people in the house? Myself, the maid, and Mr. George Reeves, Mr. Reeves' nephew. Tell him I'd like to talk with him. And we talked with the three people in the dead man's house. The maid, the butler, and George Reeves, the nephew. I warned him not to take his walk tonight. I showed him the papers. Did he usually take walks at night? That's for the past 15 years. Know why anyone would want to kill him? Mr. Reeves? Of course not. You know very good and well it was that fiend what did it. How about you? Can you think of why anyone would want to kill your employer? No, sir. I've been with Mr. Reeves for over 20 years. I'm acquainted with most of his friends and associates. Look here. I can assure you that my uncle knew no one who would want to kill him. You're his nephew? That's right. Your uncle took walks every night? Yes, every night. Well, if you don't mind, we'd like you all to come down at the station to make statements. Okay, we got the statements, another list of names, and a long one. None of these killings tie together. Nobody on the first list has any connection with anybody on the second list. Let's face it, if that madman calls again, we can't stop him. Oh, take it easy, Well, can we? I want to talk to the maid, the butler, and the nephew again. Why? It's just the same as all the others. I want to talk to them, okay? I'm sorry. Getting jumpy. No, you're tired. 
So am I. Otis, send in the maid. What are you doing? Fixing the recorder. I may want to listen to it again. So we again talked to the maid, then the butler, then the nephew. And the tape recorder picked up everything they said, and it sounded very much like everything everybody else had said after the first two killings. Walt let them go home and went up to talk to the commissioner. When he came back, he looked pretty discouraged. I'm sure on the griddle. Solve it or turn in my badge. I want you to listen to something. Oh, sure. I've cut out sections of tape, stuck them together. Mr. Reeves took walks every night after dinner, and dinner was always at 7? That's right. Then he always left sometimes close to 8? Yes, 7.30 or a quarter to 8. He was never gone more than half an hour? No. What time did he leave tonight? About a quarter to 8. Weren't you worried when he didn't come back within half an hour? Well, certainly. Both the maid and I were very anxious. Were you all in the house between a quarter of 8 and the time we arrived? Yes, sir. Where was Mr. Reeves' nephew? In his room. He went up right after dinner. How wealthy was your employer? He was very wealthy. Mr. Reeves, who inherits your uncle's fortune? Why, I do. Was Mr. Reeves ever longer than half an hour with his walks? Never more than a few minutes, one way or the other. Who handles your uncle's affairs, Mr. Reeves? Well, Richard B. Gregg. He's been my uncle's attorney for many years. Young Mr. Reeves has always been excitable. Gotten a lot of trouble in the past. Yes, he argued with his uncle many times. No, Mr. Reeves didn't come down and ask why his uncle had been gone so long. Certainly I worried about my uncle. But I thought he might have stopped along the way for something or other. Okay, so you took out pieces of the testimony and stuck them together. So what? Just this. Every one of these killings have taken place at 8 o'clock. I know, and it's worried you. Now, this is the first time that one of our victims was certain to be out on the streets at 8 o'clock. Coincidence. Ah, uh, maybe, maybe. Mr. Reeves was a wealthy man, very wealthy. And the nephew gets his money, and the nephew was in his room at the time of the killing. Who saw him? The butler and the maid both say he was up there. So he climbs out a window. His uncle was killed only two blocks from the house. Plenty of time to stab him, get back through the window. You're really reaching out, aren't you? Uh, sure I am. What do you want me to do? Well, the nephew's voice certainly doesn't match the ones we got on the threatening phone calls. So he disguises it. I got an idea. What? Let's put a tail on all three of these people anyway. It's not much. It's all we've got so far. I'm going out to check on something. What? Here's something that'll make your hair curl. I just saw the attorney for the Reeves estate, and he said the old man was planning on changing his will, leaving all his money to charity, not his nephew. He was supposed to meet with Mr. Reeves this morning. And Reeves gets killed last night. Pretty convenient for the nephew. We can't arrest him on that. No, but it makes a good motive. You think the nephew would kill two men and then his uncle, just so it would look like a madman had picked out another innocent victim? You gotta admit it'd be pretty clever. There's an understatement. Yeah. He's on the line again, Lieutenant. I'm tracing it. Oh, no. Our boy again. There goes your theory. Hello. You can't do anything, Lieutenant. I've killed three men, and you can't stop me. I'm going to kill again tonight at eight. Hello. It was him, all right. Tonight at eight. Rick, we've just got to do... Yeah? Call came from Grand Central again. Okay. Well, what happens to your theory now? Well, he might do it again. Expect you to react just this way. Uh, who's tailing George Reeves? Harrison. When does he report in again? Checks in on the hour. Last time was about 20 minutes ago. Mm, 40 minutes to go, huh? No way of contacting him? No. Okay, we wait. Yeah? Yeah? Where was he at 446? Don't let him out of your sight. Well? At 446, George Reeves made a phone call from a booth in Grand Central Station. He's home now. Well, we had something. A motive and a man calling from Grand Central, but not enough to make an arrest. We waited until 7 and then headed for the Reeves house. The area is surrounded. He'll have two men on him no matter where he goes. He's still in the house? According to Harrison. No, I want to do more than pick him up with a knife. 
Here he comes. Yeah. Climbing into his car. Attention, cars 31415. Suspect heading east. Proceed east on your streets. We tailed him, keeping in contact with the other cars as they stayed parallel. When Reeves turned off, we went on ahead, notified the car in our right or left to pick him up. That way, Reeves wouldn't suspect a tail. About 7.30, we got a call that Reeves had parked. We headed for the spot in a hurry. Suspect is heading north on Coulter. Oh, get ahead of him. Park at the corner of Davis. We'll pick him up there. We stopped at the corner and got out of the car. We waited until we spotted Reeves walking in our direction and then let him pass and followed, staying close. We kept after him until five minutes to eight. He swung out on Broadway and was pushing his way through the crowd. Then it happened. Where'd he go? We've lost him. Come on. Three minutes to eight. Let us through, please. Well, I never... Get out of the way. Who you push? Look out, please. Hey, what is... You see him turn off? No, he's got to be... Walt, Walt, crossing the street. Let's go. Reeves. What? No. Look out for the knife. No, no. Let, let me go. Let me go. Drop it. You okay? Yeah. Here's the knife. Young man. Young man, what right have you got to hit that nice gentleman? He was helping me across the street. I have a good mind to report... Lady, him. lady. If this man was helping you across the street, just forget about him. Go bet on a horse or something. This is your lucky night. Right when you need it most, Rexall scientists have developed a wonderful new product. Rexall Sunburn Cream. Available now at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Rexall Sunburn Cream is a new film-forming compound that relieves sunburn misery almost immediately, gives more uniform coverage, and stays on longer than ordinary sunburn remedy. The protective agents in Rexall Sunburn Cream relieve the soreness and annoying itching of a fresh sunburn, soothe and cool the fire, help you sleep easier after overexposure. During these summer months, keep Rexall Sunburn Cream in the family medicine chest. It's available now at Rexall drugstores everywhere. The stores with the orange and blue sign. Good health to all from Rexall. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, stars Dick Powell in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music composed and conducted by Frank Worth. Dick Powell directed the RKO production Split Second, which is now in release, and his latest film appearance was in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer award-winning The Bad and the Beautiful. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Bill Foreman inviting you to be with us next Sunday at this time when Rexall Drug Products again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Attention people on sugar-restricted diets. At last, you can get a non-fattening sweetener in granulated form. It's Rexall Sweeten It Sprinkle, the easy-to-use sugar substitute in a shaker. Just sprinkle it on food for all the taste None of the calories. And there's no bitter aftertaste. Remember the name, Rexall Sweetenette Sprinkle, at Rexall Drugstores Everywhere. 